Hey YouTube, this is TCA Gaming. So I'm going to show you guys some pretty cool purchases that I've made this past week. Tell you what, you know, people are buying and selling like crazy right now. Do me a favor, if you go and buy on eBay, just use my eBay link down here in the description first. Then go search wherever you want. You don't have to buy from me, but I tell you what, a lot of you have been buying from me because I am losing product left and right. But a lot of you are selling too. So I'm going to go into some of that. Here we go. We got a note from Ken. Hey Rusty, thank you again for wanting to buy this gray stamped Blaine's Magmar and I hope it makes a nice addition to your collection. I look forward to keeping up with your YouTube channel as well as your Instagram pro posts in the coming future. And you can see his eBay there and his Instagram. And here's the Magmar, it's, pretty, it's actually a really good uh, gray stamp. Oh, I missed it, I was like what's going on here? Usually if you can see it in a picture, you know, you know it's really good, but you can see it right there. Definitely much lighter than a regular stamp. I think I bought them for like 10 bucks or so. I don't think it's anything major, but they are pretty hard to find. Like you don't run across the gray stamps very often in the gym series. Next up, I got a Groudon Reverse Hollow Emerald. I have gotten a lot more Reverse Hollows and stuff, but um, most of them I haven't shown. Uh, you guys, I told you these Jolteons were, they were underpriced, so when you didn't buy them, I went and bought some more myself. That nine, I think I got for 110, and then I got one right here. This is a Gem Mint 9.5 from Beckett. If I can get it open, I'm gonna show you guys the business card. Let's see how the condition is. That little corner right there, that's probably what knocked it down. Yeah, it says the corners are a nine. But there we go. DFW Pokemon, there's all his information. I think I picked that up for 160 bucks or so. Next up, we have a box topper crystal crobat. Decently priced, I went ahead and I think I nabbed this for $200. Another purchase from none other than, oh, he didn't send a business card. Um, well, maybe it's in here, but this is actually from Mr. Richard Tarr. You guys have seen his information before and he comes through again. He got me another Charizard for my master set, Reverse Hollow, Gem Mint 10 from Secret Wonders. And again, he sent freebies. So we're gonna check those out. He also sent this, which is a uh, volume four, I can't remember, Pokemon fan club maybe. This may be the scissor. I can't really recall the dark scissor. We'll open it up and check it out and then let's see what cards he has right here. What they did is they had these magazines that had little inserts in them. So we got a winner, a non-winner, and then a winner and a Professor Elm. Check that out, that's really cool. A lot of little freebies right there. Tell you what, he sent us freebies in every single um, purchase and then I tell you when I made a post on Instagram somebody knew where he was and they said that every time they buy from him as well it uh he always does something really cool and he's a great seller Let's see what we have in here well it's two cards so maybe this is the Doug Trio or maybe it's the Murkrow and Darkness Energy Oh, yeah, there it is. So you got the darkness energy, and then you have the Murkrow, and you can see they've got the little uh, Neo Genesis symbols, but they're not actually from Neo Genesis. They're from this, which I believe it's. I don't think it's Pokemon Fan Club. It's the, or it might be. I don't know. I can't remember the name of it, but I used to have several sealed myself. Next up, we got another sealed base set booster box. I tell you what, these are getting really tough. I think prices are over six k now right at 6k for a decent condition one this one isn't in absolute mint but it is in really good shape uh, it does have a little tear right there I don't know if it's just a tear where the seal didn't properly seal uh, there's nothing special about this variation that I can see so if we sell out of the heavies from that other base set box then I'll probably open this one up and you know, we'll weigh those out as well Who knows? maybe we'll run into some more black triangles or the era first edition box the last purchase I'm going to show you right before we open up something is this. So I got a first edition Mint 9 
base set Charizard and it's been signed and it has a little sketch on it by Arita. Now I traded for this about half cash, half trade, and you know what? I reached out to the to the person online, and you know what? She was very very uh, easy to work with. Um, you know, I'm not really satisfied with the condition of the card itself, but that's not her fault. I mean, this is PSA. I knew with the low cert like this that it was gonna, you know, it was at a higher risk. Um, but let me show you how bad this one is. So, all right, first we'll look at the back side. You know, you can see that edge wear across the top. It's got little pieces, different white dot there. It's got some on that corner. Looking down, it's got a white dot right there. These bottom edges are pretty obvious. You can see it along this edge here, and then on this edge here. Now the hollow is really kind of what gets me, so I'm going to show it to you. You see all those little scratches? Those are not on the case. Those are definitely on the holographic part of the Charizard. I would expect that if you sent this in with other pack fresh cards from a box, nowadays it would probably get a six. Maybe a seven, you know, on a good day. Um, and the only reason I say that is because that last shadowless box that we had, you guys remember all those Charizards. I mean, those looked really good. You had to look hard to find, you know, any little scratches. And on this one, you know, it's pretty uh, obvious, you know, what's going on. But like I said, it is a, it's a four million cert, not a 40 million. So that's 4,181,784. And they graded a lot easier back then. I don't care what anyone says. Anytime I get these things in and they're really low uh, cert, the grades are just, you know, completely different. And that's not to say that something that's graded in a nine or a 10 isn't graded strongly it's just you're at a higher risk and with this one you know it's pretty evident that I just don't see this happening nowadays I mean it could I mean human error I just think it was a, you have a higher risk of something like this happening on an older cert card but overall I'm still not going to get rid of this it's got Aritas on it it does say Mint 9 you know PSA does back up the price you know on the cards although their prices are pretty outdated um, so it is still a technical PSA Mint 9, but if I did sell this to anyone, I would definitely make sure to point out all the flaws that are on it. Because, you know, if I was to grade this card raw, I would not give it a Mint 9. And I think if I sent it in, uh, they would probably, you know, bring it down a few grades, at least to a 7. Overall, it still looks really good if you're just, you know, looking at the, the aesthetics of the card overall. I like how it's got the Charizard right behind, you know, his head coming over his wings. And then you have both the Japanese and the English signature down here on the bottom of the case. It's a thick stamp. It's got good color, good centering. Overall, very clean. I'm very happy to add that to my collection. Did want to touch on the condition, though, just for uh, anyone in the future. I doubt I will ever trade or sell it, but... Maybe I can reference back to this video instead of going in too, in too much into depth. Now what we're going to open up is another Overgrowth theme deck. This one is slightly different. On the back side you can see how the Ivysaur is positioned behind the two energies. Um, I don't think it's uh, really highly likely that we will get anything or get a shadow deck out of this. It is positioned on the top side, which is kind of what we needed for the shadowless decks and the other type, but I'm not really sure with this one. But we're, we're going to see what happens. I'm not even I'm not really looking for shadowless cards. We're looking for the Beedrill error. I've heard uh, several others that have popped up, so I don't think it is too terribly rare. It's just people didn't really know about it. So, without talking about it too much more, let's go ahead. Get this thing out of here. Now, what's cool is I think, from what I remember, anytime we saw the seals like this, it had a higher chance of being shadowless as well. So, let's just see. Oh, it is a shadowless deck. Look at that. So, we'll add this to the E4 information. So, this is the the other variant that's less likely to have shadowless decks. It's got the Ivysaur behind the two energies. The deck was on top again. But we got us a shadowless deck. Now I don't know. Uh, I, I don't think I really want to open this up because usually there's a pretty bad glue strip right there, and this one's sealed up very nicely. And you got a little bit, and you got that tear right there. But usually it's in here busted wide open across the bottom. Might be cool just to keep this deck the way it is, or potentially resell. But it's kind of loose. I'm not sure that I see too much of staining going on with this Gyarados. I don't know. What do you guys think? Either way, the B drill inside is not going to be the 
the error that we're looking for. So for now, I think I'm gonna just keep this sealed. We, you guys know exactly what's in the deck. You got some ivasaurs, some bulbasaurs, weedles, you know, that kind of stuff. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. We had a nice little surprise there with the shadowless deck. Maybe we'll do that one day with a brush fire and get us a no damage nine tails. That would be really sweet. Anyways, thanks for watching. Catch you guys later.